sharing your story. I'm going to make sure I get that right. All right. So next we have Ms. Barack uh, with this uh, St. Paul Recovery Act Community Reparations Commission. Um, she's a legislative aide, and she will update us on the commission. I'm a shorty, so I'm going to stand on the side of the podium and give an update. But um, myself and uh, Trevor Cruz, who's actually that commissioner on commission, very recently, as of two days ago, provided an update to the St. Paul City Council on the progress of the St. Paul Recovery Act Reparations Commission. And I uh, provided that same presentation with you. To you, I'll first start off with what we've created as the commission uh, in terms of our labor acknowledgement. And we recite this at every meeting as a form of paying homage and for us to ask for guidance from our ancestors as we really do this important historical policy work. Now, anybody can create, you know, their own specialized, um, you know, labor acknowledgement. So feel free to take this and modify it as you uh, see fit. But we acknowledge that much of America, including its culture, economic growth, development, has been made possible by the forced free labor of enslaved Africans and their descendants who suffered the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade, chattel slavery, Jim Crow segregation, and acts of racism, all culminating into modern-day disparities. We pay homage to these ancestors and ask that they guide the efforts of the Reparations Commission to correct these wrongs for those who are living and those who are yet born. Now, as we talk with the city council uh, members, all seven in the city of St. Paul, we wanted to at least create a, a basic foundation uh, for the definition of reparations. And this came directly from dictionary.com, where it says reparations are forms of compensation provided to those who have suffered wrongdoing or to their descendants, it may refer to payments made in the aftermath of war, slavery, or other forms of wide scale systemic injustice. Reparations can typically consist of monetary payments, but they can also consist of goods, materials, or repertory actions intended to account for such damages to address ongoing injustice. In the United States, reparations have been made to groups and proposed for others. Discussions of the topic often involve proposals to make reparations to people who have been the victims of brutal treatment and racist policies throughout U.S. history, including Native Americans and the Black Americans who are descendants of African people enslaved in the U.S. Now, what really created the uh, St. Paul uh, Recovery Act Community Reparations Commission first started with the resolution um, January 13th of 2021. And that formed what was then the Reparations Legislative Advisory Committee. And those who formed that committee created the framework for the permanent commission, which is known as the St. Paul Recovery Act Community Reparations Commission. And then it was in January of 2023 that um, an ordinance was established, establishing uh, the Recovery Act Reparations Commission. And in a nutshell, our role is to advise the city council and mayor in all policy and budget related matters pertaining to reparations in the city. Then following that, on June 28th of 2023, we appointed uh, the following commissioners, 
Jamila Pickett, Julia Pringle, and Nick Khalif to a term of one year. Carla Robinson, Idman Ibrahim, Joseph Budorn, and Nick Muhammad to terms of two years, and Arthur McCoy, Nyla Golden, Traherne Cruz, and Jeremy English to terms of three years, after which every uh, future commissioner will serve three years. Now, in terms of the purpose of the commission, I'm laying out a bit more detail. In the State Policy Administrative Code, it states that the Reparations Commission is to serve as an advisory body to the mayor and city council on matters relating to repairing the damage caused by public and private systemic racism in the city of St. Paul, which resulted in racial disparities in generational wealth, home ownership, health care, education, employment, and pay and fairness within the criminal justice system among American descendants of child slavery. Now, our powers, uh, again, is to act in advisory capacity to the mayor and the city council through the following activities. I think I do have a point here, 67. Uh, we're empowered to make short, medium, and long-term policy programs and budget recommendations to specifically address the creation of statement of generational wealth for African-American descendants of child slavery and to boost economic mobility and opportunity in the American descendant of child slavery community. Establish a work plan which will serve to notify city officials of the commission's priorities and activities to develop a time-based evaluation of city expenditures using quality of life metrics indicators on the progress of reparations and review and advise city programming and budgeting relating to reparations and serve as expert for reparations policies and actions within the city and conduct all business in such a manner to encourage and utilize maximum citizen participation. Now, in terms of our key activities, uh, the commission itself um, really got started a, a bit later than it was expected. And so myself, I was hired in March to begin uh, our first meeting. And then very recently, we hired a uh, executive assistant, uh, Jamie May, who's, uh, you know, in the background helping us pull together our plan our minutes, all that good stuff. We've had five commission meetings thus far since March. We've elected our officers, and that is uh, Chair Cruz and Vice Chair Julia Pringle. We've adopted our uh, meeting schedule on the first, fourth Wednesday of the month, six o'clock, which will now be at the Rondo uh, Library. Uh, we've written our commission bylaws, and we just very recently adopted a general budget request of 500000 to support the work of the commission. And we're currently in the stage of de developing our work plan um, and establishing committees around each of the subject matters um, where, um, you know, we kind of know what we're doing going into the new 2025 fiscal year. Um, in a nutshell, our budget priorities um, that we're, you know, kind of working around and, and it's not finalized yet, but this is um, where, you know, some of the ideas that have been generated is building the knowledge base of the commissioners. I, I think as, you know, some of the commissioners have came up, you know, this is still a learning uh, opportunity and, and everybody's at their own level and learning curve around this topic matter. So we really want to even get out into the community, conduct some listening sessions, and just hear, you know, where the community is at, how much they know, where they're at, what are their thoughts on this, you know, concept and on this movement. And we want to invite uh, presenters from, you know, different uh, entities that are working on this issue. Again, to broad the base of understanding and knowledge of this movement. And we want to develop a glossary of some key concepts because these are really new concepts 
into our, you know, lexicon, certainly in the Black community, probably generally, you know, in the um, American, um, you know, population as well. So it would be who wants to do this and then just support educational um, development, you know, help with help people get to conferences, uh, get educational materials. Again, just to broaden their understanding of this movement because we have to both look at history and look at what's going on temporarily. And that's a lot of information to come back, frame, and split aside. Um, number two objective is to clarify and quantify what harm looks like in Senegal and how it connects historically and contemporarily. And that relates to Cam's uh, proposal of developing a harm report to um, hopefully give us a starting point for redress um, here in St. Paul and you know make those connections nationally and make those connections historically and contemporarily. Um, we're looking at uh, helping to support some ongoing work that's been going on, for example, in the historic African American Rondo community. There has been some archival uh, work to expand documentation. And um, in, in that particular community here locally, they've had a very long standing redress concern. So, this whole movement of reparations, you know, is a good opportunity to elevate, you know, um, uh, the concerns of the Rondo community. And then look at developing a historical timeline, again, to map both local and national um, events that we want to, you know, kind of build those reparations related connections around. And then thirdly, institutionalized commission work for long term success. Um, there has been discussion to examine. Um, if our commission is, is um, you know, okay to still remain under the auspices of the city council, or if we should move um, and be in alignment with other commissions and be under the mayor's administration. So we have a committee that will look at, you know, what are the pros and cons of those. And then to develop... Um, Again, that long term, as Cam talked about, again, the slavery, disclosure, and redress ordinance. Uh, because again, that could give a way, besides looking at government as an entity, looking at uh, private actors that uh, have some historical ties to reparations, and that may be a, a way to fund long term, um, you know, some financial support, uh, you know, for restitution. And then create uh, a repertory justice fund uh, that much resources fall into for longer term programmatic initiatives. And in closing, um, I want to leave you with this quote from the book The Dead, which was written by Randall Robinson in the early 2000s. America, oops, sorry. America has consistently refused to confront the issue of racism and the enormous debt owed to African Americans for helping to make this the richest, most powerful nation in the world. It cannot have happened without the free, skilled, and unskilled work of Black slaves who built this country. America owes a debt to African Americans, and it is past time to put this issue on the table. Okay. Um, I first say, Paul, don't be said lady very well with her work. But I'm curious, I have to get I have to follow me for this project uh, for next year. So, there is there an actual body that I want to? Into the and to approved, but I know that I'm dead, uh, next week on the 13th. Right. Um, it's our understanding and talking with uh, our city council uh, uh, budget director 
that um, we still have some time, you know, because again, we can start a bit late, but we still have some time to, you know, kind of work our particular budget request in. Um, we're in a stage of kind of combining our ideas with that $500,000 request and then to have that serve it, um, you know, in the city's budget. But yes, you're all right. It was still, you know, have to go through city council approval, the mayor's approval, and so the finality of it, um, we're still, you know, we still have some time off on that and have some time to do that. Yeah. Um, Okay, all right, thanks. Any other questions? So I have a permanent question. One, I think it's in the late. I can't hide that video that way. It's on time. And so there's an indigenous like land acknowledgement of it all of them. We're a reparation commission. How is it that we can implement our labor acknowledgement? Mm -hmm. So, because most of our meetings are white, so they are public shaping, I just basically not. Shared it. She has a whole, what do you call it, that can be confronted. But she was a former city attorney. And so every time I do it, and she's looking at me like, why did you do it? But I'm like, we have to do it to normalize the behind for the use of what is mentioned to them. About pros and cons that you are aware of being prepared for uh, permission versus council permission because the city. We are mayor's commission, not city council. Um, the um, the ground, something off the top of the head, what all happened. And that's what we have to research. So it would be good to, you know, have a conversation with you to see what might be parameters that are particular to, is it Los Angeles, you said? So that then we can transfer that information to our same office if the same thing applies, and then you know, you know, some weight on uh, both of those. But we haven't gotten into the research part of that. Um, the city has a every office has a different standard of insulating your permission from budget. Yeah. No, we, again, our commission has just started. So, whatever it is that we can learn um, and get tips from those that have been in the fray, you know, for a longer period of time than ourselves, we would. You're also going to start. Yeah, we definitely open the invitation to have a deeper discussion so that we can know some shortcuts and some things to look out for. Thank you for providing that insight. Strong 
because we know now we have a very strong mayor how one of the council Okay, they switched it now. But it was simply not based on the council and where they have the first and the power in the case of the council. Okay. So we really need to say that I just don't to that. Okay, thank you. I think we have a suggestion. Also, changing over the past the order change that's getting closed, make it a permanent, permanent, permanent part of state government. does change yeah, and we are the only one in you know the entire movement that does have a permanent institutionalized entity. A permanent commission by ordinance. Okay, well, we should look them up. Yeah, we should look them up. You know, it's kind of too hard. It's not something right now. And I'm talking a lot of you know is that our city council is seven women, one Caucasian person, and the rest of all women of color. Mm -hmm. So they get it. So the people, they get it. They get it. Right so we're at very helpful reach for the next 24 years. They're going to be on our well, you know. Well, that's true. That's because they are women and people, women of color. Yeah, we still got a. Yeah, we still have work to do. We still do education and and advocacy. So yeah, it doesn't none of we can't take anything for granted. And we have to realize that you know we have to grow the base of community support um, because regardless of the administration and how the political winds may swing, there are times in which you may need strong, strong, strong community uh, pressure. Are there any other questions, comments? Yes. Okay, good. And so, yes, part of our work plan is to do those uh, listening sessions and come out to the community and, uh, you know, because of each of the awards and, you know, give this presentation and get some feedback from the community. I don't know how much they talk about like this, but I think when we make those presentations for the community, make it ask. Oh, yeah. Make it ask of the folks in the community because. Both of those city council people, right? So they're the ones that we have to depend on to make sure the budget is set. Yes. Yes. Okay, we'll take that. Figure out a way to do that because you got to realize I, I am wearing a city hat. So, you know, and that's, and that's fine, but you got to have your inside people, your outside people, and all that good stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? All right, anyone else? Okay, I hope this has been, been helpful. Yeah, I look forward to it.